Hey, buddies, Potato Whiskey here and welcome back to playing Japan where we started off in Battle Royale Island and now we have created an absolute paradise on a new continent and we're finally debating what we do about the Inca. Now the Inca, they're kind of running away with the game, right? They have 500 culture per turn, 230 science per turn, which is the second most science in the game. However, they are um, technologically only middle of the pack, but that's still really high up there. Um, culturally, they're on the road to winning. And I think, I think I have a shot to take them without going to war. I could theoretically immediately pivot to advanced flight, start mass producing bombers because I have four copies of aluminium. Uh, I could have eight bombers, build some airstrips over in Yag Yag y Yamagata and start bombing the hell out of the Inca. However, that seems a lot less interesting to me than just raw economic management and trying to economically manage my way out of the game and then risking the chance of losing. This game has already been on the edge of a knife for pretty much the last 150, 250 turns. I've been close to losing, okay? And I think going to war and just bombing him out that's like taking the easy win, right? That's like, that's easy. Anybody could do that. Anybody could declare a war and win a war. But I think it's way harder and more interesting if we win an economic victory, right? Where we just manage our empire to the level that we can like break out. And I think that's what we're going to do. It's easy, so let's do it. Did you not watch my last two games where I, I literally just showed in my last two games how easy it is for a dedicated player with even a slight like inkling towards military in the late game with airplanes can completely obliterate the AI. Like that's my last two games were completely dedicated to that. And I want to do something different this game. So we're going for the economic tourism win. Uh, now that I've cleared out this uh, archeological site, I can finally place my industrial zone here. Finally, been a long time coming. Kill the Apostle by Sushiville. <sighs> it's a dangerous game. I don't, I can't get a unit close enough. I and mean, we can maybe pop you in here and maybe scooch a kill but that leaves me under defended here i got my amphitheater and juice something or other so now i can talk to him and grab another couple of great works these ones are only worth 25 to him 25 gold per turn absolutely worth it on my ha half a lot has happened and uh we're potentially in position for a win i'm not going to create these um these national parks until the next era isn't bulk gold better than gold per turn while buying great works i don't have bulk gold to sell and if he declares war on me, he loses his gold per turn, so I don't mind. Besides, the majority of my, my gold per turn is coming from um, uh, selling things. I can just sell things to the AI. So it's really just diplomatic money that I'm, I'm trading. It's not like important critical infrastructure money. It's spare money that I generate from diplomacy. Don't pay GPT lump sum is much cheaper? Sure, in theory. However, by paying in GPT, he is disincentivized from declaring war on me. Because he will lose the money he gets uh, over time from me. And I'm just stealing all that money back, right? That's all money that I'm just stealing from him. I think I might get a religious alliance with her. I think I'm going to get a religious alliance with Wilhelmina in order to lower the amount of religious pressure that my cities have to deal with. Because I'm pretty sure that means now that the passive religion problem that I was having in here is no longer a problem. And now I'm just at leisure able to like choose how I rebuild. I right, can get this kill. Boom. Kicked her back slightly. So now we have some pretty difficult decisions, actually. We have to choose between Heartbeat of Steam, which has carried us through two eras here, or do we go for Wish You Were Here? 100% tourism for national parks is massive, and 50% uh, tourism from World Wonders is also quite okay, especially in our capital where we have a World Wonder. I think all these cities are actually producing just fine without Heartbeat of Steam. So I think Wish You Were Here, with the fact that I'm planning more and more national parks this era, I think that gets me the tourism I need to win the game, especially because I'm literally starting to plant like national parks as we speak. So I got my shipyard in Timishora. The big thing I'm missing is things like, yeah, theater squares. Need to get those theater squares. App, like super late game theater squares are happening right now. Let's make sure we're getting open mutual borders with the AI. Not only would it allow me to steal their great works, but it also gives me tourism pressure against them. All right, so he, she has done a little bit of a maneuver here to catch me off guard with one of my religious units. He's kind of trapped, but I'll just park him into Timmy Shoara and he'll be safe there. I can do a double attack to get a major victory, soften up one of her religious units. I can't quite make it my all the way around. It's okay. What do I currently have? I have an ancient artifact and an ancient artifact. 
So whatever I just picked up there, ancient from England. Did I just seem a museum automatically? Oh, it's Renaissance. Never mind. A small question. Why are you going with archaeologists compared to great works of art? In this particular case, shouldn't buying great works of art from the Inca better be better there for slowing them down and accelerating yourself faster? Um, it's really just down to the fact that archaeologists are just better. Here's a great work of art. It is three culture, two tourism. Archaeological work is three culture, three tourism. Theoretically, buying stuff from the Inca could potentially slow down, but they're harder to theme and they don't generate as much tourism. So yeah, I, I guess that would make sense. Like it's not a, it's not a, it's not an awful idea. I'll give you that. Am I missing a spy? I am missing a spy. I need to build it somewhere. Isn't that a four tourism swing? Minus two for them and plus two for you. No, it doesn't work like that. It's a five. It, it doesn't work like that because that's not how it works. Um, it is a four tourism swing, but that's, oh my God. How is he winning? What? 19 turns, excuse me. It might actually be over. Wait, what? It's got to be one of the, he just got lucky that turn, right? Cope. How is he generating so much tourism? Or how is he getting so many tourists? He's only making 247 tourist tourism per turn. That doesn't make sense. Rock bands? I don't see rock bands. I don't hear the rock band noise. You can hear that across the whole damn map like another kill. Bringing back Hinduism here, fighting back. Okay. The problem is that there's two AIs that are really close to winning and then I'm, I'm constantly under threat. So who, I, who am I not trading with? I'm trading with everyone. So I guess I can just use this for envoys. Tourism victory. Okay. You guys need... So here's how the... Here, okay. We need to do another tourism victory tutorial. Okay. Culture is defense. Tourism is, I gotta spell my F's in the less weird way so people can read it, offense, okay? You don't have like player A, hang on, player A versus player B, okay? You don't compare tourism to tourism, okay? You compare player A's tourism against Everybody in the game's culture, player B, player C, player D, player E, culture, okay? And whoever has the most culture, so whoever has the highest, that's who they have to beat. So let's say player B has the highest, okay? So I am making 280 tourism per turn. Pacha Cutie is making nearly 500 culture per turn. That means in order for Hojo Takamune, for me, to win the game, I have to steal 422 tourists from all the other players in the game. Pachacuti only has to fight whoever has the highest culture, since he doesn't fight his own culture. So Wilhelmina has the second highest culture in the game. Therefore, Pachacuti only has to get 220 tourists because that's how many Wilhelmina has. Cross out the one I'm not supposed to do. You don't do this. You compare it to the highest culture. And then, how does tourism actually work? Every single player in the game, okay, let's say we have uh, player A, player B, player C, player D, player E, okay? They all have culture towers, okay? Every single player in the game has a culture tower and they'll be different heights, okay? How tourism works is your tourism, okay, is like a heist. And you're stealing from all of these towers. Okay? You're stealing. This is what tourism does. You steal from these towers. So as you steal, as you steal, these towers get shorter. Right? They get shorter and shorter and shorter. They lose a little bit off the top. They lose a little bit off the top, right? They're getting shorter. And then you take this tourism and you bring it over here. And you're trying to build a tourism tower that is taller than the tallest culture tower, okay? So that's how it works mechanically, right? Tourism steals tourists from other players and turns it into a tourism pile that needs to get bigger than everyone else's pile. That's why I need to get 422 tourists. And you can see I've stolen 13 from Eleanor, 13 from Cleopatra, 12 from Wilhelmina. So I'm taking all of these tourists, I add them all up, and then I get this number 50. And then the the biggest culture tower that I have to beat is 421, which means I need 422 tourists. So tourism lowers towers, enemy culture towers. So like, as I steal tourists from Pachacuti, this number goes down 
and my number over here goes up as does this number go up so it gets even harder to beat me so oh no that's domestic tourists uh that's wrong actually no this gets bigger but rock bands okay rock bands are like surgical strikes teams okay rock bands are the only source of tourism that applies to a single player so if you're trying to build a tower bigger than player c you send your rock bands against player c because what you're doing is essentially blowing up chunks of his tower by sending rock bands. You make his tower shorter and your tower bigger at the same time. Therefore, you win faster. That is how tourism works. Rock bands are literally your like your 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 deep state, uh, you know, false flag operation that you use to like steal other people's tourism. Taylor Swift is a deep state false flag operation. Correct. You got the correct conclusion from that tutorial. So, in the city of 100 science deficit i feel like i need to get broadcast centers and the reason i need to get broadcast centers is because i need to increase my culture per turn if i increase my culture per turn i am going to be generating more tourists um more domestic tourists which will buy me more time to fight patrick cutie so i may actually purchase this and just start working theater square festivals in this city to crank out as much culture as possible i may even prioritize culture and food and de-work all my tiles so my city can better choose what it works. So the more culture I generate here, the harder it is going to be to beat me. And I need to get my tower bigger than Wilhelmina's in order to be the person who is, is st stalwartly defending against, uh, against the Inca. So Moai City is doing a really good job. It needs more builders. I also need to build like a district in here. Um, well, I think builders are like the big, the big bottleneck I'm lacking right now are builders. So the appeal in and around here isn't quite good enough yet i think i would need another builder in here i also want to build a holy site and i want to build a preserve it's complicated it's complicated a lot a lot that i want to build but not enough time to build it let's start looking for good cultural trade routes maybe i guess gold also works because i can trade gold for culture so we are just mass stealing all of inca's gold so any gold he is making is making his life hard Honestly, getting a cultural alliance with her might be good and then trade with her a bunch to boost her culture. That might be the sus. Now we have ideology and now we can head towards democracy where now alliances are starting to look more attractive to me. But if I start getting alliances with everyone on the map, <coughs> it means I won't be able to, um, well, it means I won't be able to, you know, go to war. And I am truly, you know, going all in on the economic move. So let's grab all these tiles for Wrath Gorman and then we'll go in and buy a naturalist so we can crack one down in that city. We managed to grab a grove and jumping jacks. It would take 20 turns for a sanctuary. Tempted to just buy that. And I will, because it just makes these tiles really cool. A meeting house plus three faith. Really need theater squares and campuses and stuff like that. I'm just going to pop down a, camp or a theater square here. More, more culture means more defense, means more survival. So now I lost access to the li limes card, limes. So I can't build walls as fast anymore. But that's okay. Instead, we're just going to plug in the veterancy card so we can build harbors faster. And I'll also plug in economic union. Or do I want to plug in five-year plan? How important is science to me right now? Science is still quite important to me. I'm going to have five-year plan in for a little bit longer. Now, here's a question. Do we want to build Crystal Redentor? The question really comes down to, can we build it before it matters? No one else is building it. We do not have very good production across our empire. That is something we have to contend with. And we don't have anyone who can boost that production. And it's an extremely expensive wonder. It's uh, 1,620 production. So it would take me an extremely long time to build it, no matter where I built it. Maybe Fukuoka could build it because it's my Petra city, but that would need serious, serious amounts of builder charges. You know what, actually, this might be the city to do it. If I go for Christo, yeah, I'm gonna go for Christo. And I'm gonna buy a builder. I'm gonna cancel those Renaissance walls. And we're gonna chop chop and improve as many tiles as we can. I'm not quite all in on seaside resorts, but I am going to be getting a lot more of them uh, in the near future. I hear the rock band noise. I heard it. Okay, it's the Netherlands doing rock band stuff. Okay, I'm okay with the Netherlands doing rock band stuff. I'm totally fine with that because if the Netherlands is stealing tourists from the Inca, it's actually making my life easier. It's if the Inca starts doing rock band stuff that I get scared. I have my temple. I have my fully built stuff in here. I'm missing a sanctuary. City really needs like a builder and a it needs a theater square. These sanctuary buildings are so expensive, dude. They're 440 production. Like it's crazy how 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 expensive they are. 
Right, there's computers. This is a really important milestone. That's a 25% tourism boost across my entire empire. That's huge. So now I'm up to 366 tourism per turn, which means theoretically, I am making more tourism than the Inca per turn. However, he does have a significant head start and a lot less tourism to generate. So I have a long way to go, but we are much closer than we were. And, and that is worth something, especially because I've got a huge muscle of religious units here defending Wambert now. I don't have to invest much in here. I'm able to hold the line here religiously for the foreseeable future. However, I am the last hope for the religious in this world um, because the Inca have fallen. I am the only thing standing between the Netherlands and, the, and a religion victory, which is not good. If this is a religiously promoted rock band, the game may already be over. So I need to start sending missionaries out across the seas to the new world, or perhaps even recruiting them from jumping jacks and just flip a few more of these cities to my religion because it's not looking good. Let's get another national park. National parks are always worth three air escorts. Great, there's a little bit more tourism. Yeah, if they have Christian Rock on that rock band, it's, it's gonna be tough for me. This is the only hope for the entire game right here. So I got my archeologist production in here died when I switched to tourism production, changed my mind. Let's get those broadcast centers. They'll give me what I need to defend. I wish I had built this stupid diplomatic quarter somewhere else. Building it here was like the biggest mistake ever because I never had time to actually do it. Right, we're going to harvest here for 200 production. That shaves 10 turns off the crystal. Continue siphoning funds from Inca. Lighthouse completed in Weeb Central. This city needed a builder a long time ago. I'll get the shipyard, but man, did this need a builder a long time ago. 7.2 production. No way is that good enough. I just, I haven't, I, that's been my big problem this game is I haven't made enough builders. I'm severely lacking in builders. I'm trying too hard to force infrastructure construction and it's just not working. Oh, I don't, like 700. Oh, why would I, no. It's not worth it. That tile can just flood. What tiles are being protected? If I, if I don't care about the tile, I won't build the flood barrier. I don't care about those tiles. Well, theoretically they are seaside resorts, but I'm okay with them dying. It takes way too long to build that unless I were to go for things. I just, my production is so bad this game. I didn't go for a, a, a remotely productive build at all. Although I'm on the board, it says I'm going to win in 90 turns and we just unlocked democracy. So we could do interesting things with democracy and alliances. Patch of cutie here, 53 turns. I'm on the board. It's possible. It may happen. Do I get a friendship with him? You know what? I'm all in. Now here's the thing. If I get a cultural alliance with the Inca, Culture generation works in my favor right now, I think. And it means that all of my trade routes are better, but I can't steal gold from him. Ah, oh, fuck, I forgot about that. I completely forgot, I know. That's gonna be a reload, dog. Can't get an alliance with the Inca because I need to be, I forgot they made that change. It's such a squirrely change too. Save scum, I mean like implement an undo button. Like, and stop, like, it's possible. Is that a recent change? It's happened, it, it, I think it changed in like the, the latest patch or the patch before that it's a it's it's a relatively new change so like my muscle memory doesn't all like or like my yeah like my muscle memory doesn't always consider it so no alliance with inca basically uh we're gonna pick up ski resorts am i switching to democracy i think i stay with this for the discounts with faith because a 15 percent faith discount is actually a pretty significant faith boost right because like a really like maybe visual way to see it is like if i pay 100 for something and you pay 85 and you pay the 85 sometimes you can think of like a 15 percent discount as like i'm like you're coming out with 15 spare so now this one actually right because this one um because you have a spare 15 this one only needed 70 from you right or or, or maybe no, no here's a better way to do it 85 so now you're plus 30, now you're plus 45, now you're plus uh, 60. So like a 15% discount is like a 20% production boost, right? So it's like having 20% more faith, roughly. Because every fifth, say somewhere slightly after the fifth thing that I buy, right? In this ratio, I get another one for free because I've saved up all this extra resources. So a 15% discount is like a 20% production boost is a way to think of it. So if you have a 15% discount, you can have 20% more stuff than someone else. Isn't there a hidden tourism multiplier from democracy though? I think that was removed from the game. I'm gonna spam builders from here. I, I just need like an absurd amount of builders. I didn't mean to buy a builder there. I meant to buy a trader. Well, misclicks galore. A 15% discount is like an 18% production bonus. Yeah, but I, I figured 20% is like close enough to where you're relatively informed. 
but I wanted to do it visually rather than just say the numbers. This is why I did it the way I did it. God, I should have never hard built this sanctuary. It was a mistake. Oh shit, I missed out on this. Oh, that's unfortunate. I should have I should have ran some projects to get silver. There was no way I was getting silver. She got the diplo point. Two civic boosts is annoying. It's okay though. I'm not mad, Cope. Let's trade with my allies. So um I think trading with Egypt is quite powerful in my capital. Could possibly also trade from one of these cities. Cross-continental trade is quite powerful. Rip Kobe beef. We're ripping up the great works right now. It's feeling good. My tourism is climbing very rap or my culture is climbing very rapidly. Maybe not fast enough, unfortunately, but we will get there. Uh, I'm going to vote the hell out of democracy in the face of that. I'm going to vote down Wilhelmina now. And I will vote up the World Games because two tourism for every campus is a big deal, actually. This is where we might do some training athletics projects. <sighs> Do you want to move Liang to the Builder City? Maybe, but that would completely cripple the city's ability to produce. Because almost all of the production in the city comes from Liang. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, one, two, three. Honestly, not a bad idea, actually. It's only three production now. Worth moving her. We got our archaeological museum. I could buy that rather than build it. Broadcast center. 126 turns until I win. Do I even have my governors in my national park cities? Actually, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. So I need a governor in all three of these cities. Magnus is staying where he is. But I can reassign you. I forgot. Wait, no, you don't You don't need the governor to be in there. That's like, I thought the 100% tourism from national parks just happens on its own. No, the 100% tourism from national parks just happens on its own. The, the, the world, the, you only need the governor in them for the world wonder tourism. Sorry, you just like completely baited me there. Jesus. Completely questioned my own reality for a few seconds. I, I knew I was right. All right, national park in Tokyo, I think. Do I want to spend money on this? Yes. Oh no. Oh, I can't place any more. Chomp. Keep expanding the borders of the city so we can keep chopping. Can I afford another naturalist? No, not for another couple of turns. Missing a trade with Eleanor. I'll trade with Eleanor to keep that tourism up. She, like, Wilhelmina really wants to, like, convert Wambert, but she just cannot, cannot do it. Egypt, let's go ahead and declare a friendship with you. And then we are going to get an alliance. Perhaps cultural with Egypt, I could trade with her, get lots of culture. Extra great people points from trading with my ally. Need to think about the World Games. Maybe closer towards the mid of the World Games, we'll look into like doing the project. How are we doing, boys? We're actually okay. It's not a complete disaster yet. There's another national park. Boom, 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 boom. More tourism. It's a slight disaster, but it's not yet like total, like abandon all hope. Inca is running away with the game tourism wise. However, I am slowly out competing them. Slowly clawing my way up. Scientifically, he's already launched the Earth satellite. Now, if he launches the moon landing, that makes my life really hard. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. That's my take. All right, regenerating power. Finally got the sanctuary in Tokyo. You've no idea how long I've been waiting for this. And now I can also go ahead and get the naturalist here soon. Um, I'll get it now. And then I'll swap tiles around. Okay, <sighs> immediately go ahead and build me a diplomatic quarter. Coal power plant, did this flood. Oh, it's perma-flooded? It shouldn't be perma-flooded. Maybe Flood Barrier can save it. Let's make sure we're trading with Egypt primarily, but we also want to make sure we do have trade routes with everyone. All right, convert to another city. Feels good. AI moon landing doesn't mean anything. They go to nanotechnology last thing. Sometimes that's the future tech. The reason the AI moon landing is a problem is because you get 10 times your science as culture, which makes winning a culture victory harder. That's why the AI going for a moon landing is a problem. Well, let's get that preserve going. Lump culture counts towards tourism requirements. Yes, all culture you generate. If you boost a technology, that makes it harder for someone. If you boost a, a, a civic, that makes it harder for someone else to win a culture victory. If you get culture from an event, from a whatever, if you have generated culture, it makes the game harder for the person trying to win a tourism victory. I do feel like a seaport purchase here is huge for this city. Most importantly, because I can build these silk industry things and get a huge amount of culture. And it also makes these coastal tiles way more productive in terms of gold, which is like the majority of what I'm working in the city. The little bit of housing is okay. Sabotage their spaceport. I need my guys to be highly leveled to do that. <sighs> but it might be doable now. What's that one in? Cusco. I could definitely do Cusco. We have some debaters coming in. It's scary, but if we hold the line, we're fine. Another national park. Boom, boom, boom. You can't do any spying actions on allies. No. None. There's professional sports. 
Now, I could use my gold to get a stadium, and I think I will, because that'll give me passive points per turn here. So let's see if I can sell some stuff. She really wanted coal. She really wanted aluminium. And he really wanted coal. So that should be enough now if I come in here. I should be able to purchase a zoo. And in the near future, I should be able to purchase a stadium. And that will give me passive points towards the world games. So maybe I can get away with running like a train athlete project here and buying a stadium. So with professional sports, another really key technology here is environmentalism for 25% tourism across their empire, but also really important here is online communities. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick up cultural heritage and I'm gonna switch to democracy this turn. This is when we make the switch to democracy because democracy is gonna allow me more tourism options. I do need to keep religious orders, sadly. Machiavellianism, I can probably keep too. Colonial taxes is only growing in value. Um, Visselbanken now in combination with the um, trade routes to allies provide for food and for production combined with Visselbanken uh, means I'm getting half a point towards alliances per turn and I'm getting six food and six production from trade routes to my allies which means trade routes are way 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 more valuable to me now otherwise none of this stuff like super inspires me definitely just need to keep public works in five-year plan can probably be taken out now it's not as important it's still important, but not as important. New Deal is super powerful, right? 14 amenities, 28 uh, housing. Liberalism, also super powerful here. Um, to go up to maximum amenities here in the late game. I think I will keep military research because that's 30 science just for free, essentially. Trade Confederation is okay. Triangular Trade is okay. Maybe I'll plug you there. Mostly what I'm going to be plugging in here is going to be replaced very quickly by the tourism cards. So I may as well just plug something in that gives me like a nice short-term bonus, like sports media. I'm thinking about this city, what do I do in it? I'm missing shipyard builders. I'm just missing so many builders. You have a look here, what's he got in range? He's got enough stuff in range for it to be scary for me to counterattack here. So I'm just gonna play defense with this guy. I will swap this guy out, however, for more health. I got my amphitheater in here. Hey, Inca, how do you feel about selling me your great works? Probably a better to do this through the quick deals mod. Like, let's say I want to purchase. Uh, I'll buy your luxuries. I also want to buy your great works. I want to buy your great works of riding. 260 gold deal. 264 gold. Do I have room for more? I have room for two more. Am I getting great riders anytime soon? I am going to get a great rider in like 11 turns. So not worth waiting. 260, 260. So I spent a lot of the money that I had planned to put on a stadium, but I think that's worthwhile to get this many great works of writing because it just makes a huge difference in the long term. National History Museum. Yep. Art Museum. Let's get as many great works in there as we can. Can you buy relics as well? AI is really reluctant to sell relics. Like I, I almost never, ever, ever do they sell them. Never. Am I winning? Um, Questionable. Very questionable. <laughs> as to whether or not I'm winning. We'll build the electronics factory and purchase the stadium. Why are you getting tourism from the olive plantation here? Um, I'm getting tourism from the olive plantation because the developers uh, went through and changed it so that every improvement that generates culture can also generate tourism at flight. That's why it's generated 33 cult, uh, tourism in total. Whereas if you compare that to something like the mausoleum, that's generated 605 tourism. Or for example, my theater square that's generated 811 tourism. Uh, this national park over here that's made 1,604 tourism. Move Moksha back to Wambert. I don't have Moksha. <laughs> I totally forgot to get him. Just brain fired it on him. Let's have a look for, um, let's have a look for antiquity sites. Almost all of the antiquity sites are over here inside Inca territory and stuff. So I do feel like if they're still around, I need to get them. Is Mary Leakey gone? Did I miss Mary Leakey? She's going to pop very soon. She's like one of the next one to two great scientists, I would say. So I need to be ready to snap her up, which means I need to get nuclear program ASAP so I can plug in science foundations. How did you get uh, portraits on the great people? It's just, it's just a UI mod. It doesn't change the gameplay, it just changes what it looks like. It used to not be that even though certain features and improvements would generate culture, they wouldn't actually give you tourism at flight. And a lot of people complained about it, so the developers decided to change it. Um, that's where that's where that all came about. Okay, I have seven envoys in the bank. Who am I taking Susan to you of? Nazca for sure. Chingeti one point. I'd love to be Susan of Johannesburg again. It's given me a lot of production, actually. Uh, one, two, three... I could have theoretically fit another national park here if I get rid of this aluminium mine. Do I want to do that? It's a thousand faith for another national park. Or do I want to put ski resorts here? I think I do ski resorts because I have room for like 
one, two, three, four other national parks, which is going to be way more faith than I might be able to even generate for the rest of the game. So I think I'll do ski resorts here. Let's make sure we're continuing to steal gold from this guy. Although I do actually want to suppress his spaceports. So I'm going to put, well, I have someone in Wanuku, I think. So then I, if I can suppress all the spaceports, I'll go back to Antawalia and can go back to stealing gold. I got to watch out for these debaters as they come around. I may have to get another apostle here to protect. Okay, yeah. Am I okay with him winning? I would really like that two tourism for each campus. It's quite powerful. I have a decent number of campuses. Is it worth pumping production into? That's the question. And I don't think it is, so I'd rather just take the silver. Maybe I'll dedicate one city to it. Right, I'm going to gain sources here before I try to disrupt this rocketry. Start cranking down more woods. I'm going to do a lattice of colossal heads and forests over here. Probably do something similar. More cities converting. Perfect. We're holding the line. I see we've settled a new world and we're, we're on the edge of losing on two fronts. Three. We're actually on the edge of losing on three fronts. Okay. We're losing a scientific victory. They're already launching the moon landings. Okay. Two people are. Inca are almost winning a culture victory. They're getting there. I'm only now starting to overtake them. Religion. I am literally this one city is the only thing stopping the Netherlands from winning a culture, a, a religion victory right now and a diplomatic victory. I, ha I don't know how I have 12 points. Right. So the only <laughs> it's like we're like literally uh, tightrope walking on a knife's edge right now. It's like insane. I've never and I've never had a game that was this close. Is this flooded? Uh, all right. After this, I think this guy needs to start just making military engineers for me so I can build my flood barriers in like a reasonable amount of time. So I got my Renaissance walls in Rathgorman. Another theater square takes a long time to pay off, whereas a builder pays off almost immediately in terms of tourism. I have so many monopolies, but they're getting flooded. Wait, did, did all? Where are the furs on this list? Where are the furs on this list? What? Anyone explain that? Are furs banned by World Congress? No. Oh. This guy needs to level up before he can disrupt the spaceport. Hey, sport. Did PETA arrive and remove the source of furs? No, I don't think so. I think that's how that works, you morons. Alrighty, so Science Foundations is a card that we definitely wanted there. We're going to go ahead and grab it and plug it in over Colonial Offices. As much as I like Colonial Offices, I need the great people points from that. Now is the time where I come over here to the city of Yaskilia and I buy the stadium. Boom. Now you get some points from stadiums. Um, and we're also training athletes. So that's a ton of amenities in this area, which should really help out. Wait, where are the rock bands? Oh, those are... Oh, uh-oh. Okay. Inca rock bands are kind of scary. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Let's pick up Cold War for another spy. More builders, more builders, more builders. Yeah, this is just... Yeah, this is going to require another apostle to defend this. Never been so close to losing a game of six and still being in the game. Usually I would just like be like, all right, well, this game is done. But surprisingly, this game is not done. Believe it or not. I really need to get, once I have Christo, I really need to spam out Seasides. Like seriously. This is so hard to find the time and stuff. It's just, it's hard, man. It's tough. 42 turns until I win. Okay, it's doable. Egypt is launching the moon landing. All right, we're... How to Adjacency was a perfectly balanced game. I like how my entire goal this game was to be like, all right, guys, I'm going to teach you guys about Adjacency today. And then Egypt is like, Giga War? <laughs> would, would you like... <laughs> or um, <laughs> or I was, I was like forced into a Giga War from like turn one. It's rough out there, man. It is rough. Theater Square. Tourism. Builds it twice as fast. Yeah. The theater Square it is. More archaeologists equals more tourism. We're just on the cusp of overtaking Patrick Cutie in the victory. Just on the cusp. You declare the war. Listen, don't like come in here with your facts. Get out of here. Oh, finally I get a debater. Oh my God. Can you rename religious units? Oh, that's devastating. But this debater is going to give me a lot of agency here because I can fight his debaters and push back Hindu uh, Protestantism even, even further, even more quickly now. Did I forget? I forgot the check for Mary Leakey! Or wait, hang on. No. <sighs> no, I didn't forget the check. We had a scientist cascade. Look, 1822 AD. She recruited a great scientist that had a massive cost. And then there was a queue of people, okay? And because it happened in the turn transition, it was a cascade. So she recruited 
an ahead of time great scientist. And then the next great scientist wasn't ahead of time. So Eleanor was able to get it really cheaply because it was her tempo. And then Egypt was able to get it really cheaply because it was her tempo. And then Egypt had so much overflow that she was actually able to get Mary Leakey again, because that's how far ahead we were on great scientist points. So like to briefly explain that, basically what happens is it is it is hands down the most frustrating part of the game because it's a bunch of actions happening where I don't ever get a chance to intervene. And that is so much bullshit in my opinion, especially when it's something competitive like a thing, because that those great people just went and I never had a chance to even declare my interest in them. They just disappeared. Hold on, I'm trying to remember where I keep my Twitch stuff. All right, let's start a new new file. Actually, you know what? It might actually be easier if I just make a quick save and load back and show you. Was it this turn? I still don't understand how it works. I'm going to go I'm going to go through it right now so you can see how it works and you can and you'll be able to agree with me how bullshit it is. Bose 100% gets it because it's actually just such it's the it's so BS dude. Because a whole bunch of things happen and I never I never get to do anything about it. This is why I think you should be able to steal great people in war. This wouldn't help. I'm allied with Egypt. So like if we look at the great scientist here, right? So a great scientist, the last great scientist to be picked up happened a long time ago, right? 1525, it's now 1820. So a, a decent number of turns have passed because the years passed lower. So if you look, right, the Netherlands are going to pick up Margaret Mead. Now, Margaret Mead costs 2,400. Okay, that's not normal. She's not meant to cost that much. She costs that much because... Hang on, let me, let me take screenshots here so I can show you this. She costs that much because, um, because she's ahead of time. She was available for the atomic era when it was still the modern era, right? And great people from future eras have an increased price attached to them. However, the great person that comes after this doesn't have an increased price. So what happens is Netherlands recruits Margaret Mead. Then the next great person has a normal price. Like over here, if you look at Helena Rubinstein, who's cost 960. So the Netherlands recruits this. All of a sudden, Egypt has 2000 points hanging around, not going towards great people. And the next great scientist only costs her a thousand points. She grabs that one. And then the one after that only costs a thousand. So in the span of a single end turn, three great scientists just disappear i never get a chance to react and yeah it's it's total it's like it's 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 the most frustrating mechanic in the game with, reg with regards to great people because like if if i go now like let's say i just i force the end of this turn right now remember we're in a we're in a quick save we're, we're in a different timeline purely for demonstration purposes but i show you now right the netherlands when the next turn ticks over boom look Ab abdus salam right one turn ended and three great scientists went Erwin Schrodinger, sorry, Margaret Mead, Erwin Schrodinger, four great scientists went. Margaret Mead, Erwin Schrodinger, Yanaki Amal, and Mary Leakey. Boom, boom, boom. And Mary Leakey was the one I wanted. In a single turn, four great scientists got recruited because the price of great scientists was inflated above where it should have been. And now I have to pay this insanely inflated price for a guy I don't want. And I, I, at no point there was I able to have a reaction to this because it happened when I ended the turn. And I just, I think it's one of the most frustrating and BS mechanics in the game. I like, you know what, Falcor? It's very brave of you for your very first time to chat in my, twi in my Twitch chat. For you to type lol at me complaining about something that really upset me. That's a very brave, it's a very brave first message, Falcor, okay? But how did England get one? Because England England goes before Cleopatra in the order. That's because it goes by viewer, it goes by player turn order. So each player in the game is in a slot. It's the basic, it's the simplest way I can describe it. And that dictates the order that they go in. So like Netherlands went first, then Eleanor, then Cleopatra. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Do you think it should be limited to one per turn? 100%! They should only be allowed to have one great person go per turn. I don't know. But in this timeline, uh, Stephanie Kolak was the person who appeared. How did they get two? I already explained that. They got two because they had like a, a gargantuan number of points saved up. And when the expensive great person, because when a great person appears before their era, they're more expensive, right? That great person who is more expensive is 
recruited and then the normal atomic era people appear who have their normal price of about 900 egypt had 2000 points saved up so they were able to recruit one for 900 they still had a thousand points hanging around from saving up for the expensive great person and then they bought another cheap great person boom 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 if you limit it to one per turn brazil is kind of screwed i don't know this is, uh, there should be there, it should be fixed somehow i feel like when multiple people have the capability of recruiting a great person, it should be like a wager. You should be able to just pump, like whoever wants to spend the most on it should get it or something. I don't know. If you're hired by a great person with golden faith, do you lose any of your great people points that you've invested? Yes, you lose them all. They're, they just, they go. Because you because uh, the more great people points you have towards a great person, the cheaper they are to invest. I think I'll take Stephanie Qualak purely just to deny her from other people, even though she's not at all a part of my strategy. So I just trained some athletes. I need to go like hardcore and military engineers. My, my empire is way too coastal for me to not get military engineers and try to recover. Well, I guess these colossal heads are quite cheap, but I am building Christo, so I should go for a seaside resorts where I can. It's not the worst mechanic in the game. It's just frustrating. That's all it is. It's really, really frustrating. Did my resources come back? I do have my monopoly on furs now. Really need to get this fixed. So Sho is ready to go ahead and disrupt rocketry. That'll take four turns to blow up this spaceport. Good job on you. What's the most frustrating mechanic? Um, I'd have to think about it. I did. I, the reason I said it was one of the most frustrating mechanics is because I didn't want to like 100% hyperbole myself into a corner and then not be able to be like, well, actually, there might be something else that I find more frustrating. It's like a very slight verbal maneuver, right? Where you leave no wiggle room. Sometimes you do it because it makes sense to. Sometimes you do it because it doesn't. How long until flood? Eight turns. I might not be able to save these. Yeah, you just can't get there fast enough. Damn it. This is the this is the danger of being behind in a game. The flooding can happen when you're not ready for it. It's really bad if it does happen. Where's my jabater? Hammering back the Protestantism. Make sure we're buying military engineers. Increase the production. Broadcast centers, are they important? They increase my culture. Yeah, I think broadcast centers might be important. All right, I think we have steel now. It's time to think about the Eiffel Tower. Somebody else is building it, I'll skip it. No one else is building it, so I could possibly go Eiffel here. Eiffel is available. Fukuoka doesn't have a flat lounge tile, however. Otherwise, I would have built it here for sure, because it has incredible production. 30 production, 30. I would ideally like somewhere that has chops left, which is not anywhere because I've used all my chopping, right? Could get it here in science deficit in 42, 43 turns. Would mean no more military engineers. Mm. 100 science deficit is an option. You're not, you're not. Well, maybe Weeb Central could build Eiffel Tower. Can you build it on desert? You can theoretically build it on desert. It would 51 turn build. I could increase the production in here. I'm working on flood barriers to prevent bad things from happening. Takamatsu probably could have built it. Uh, finding the right city to build. I mean, this might be the city to build it. It doesn't have any flood problems. It can build the Eiffel Tower. It's improvable with builders so i think this is the spot to do it where's my nearest builder you what tiles are you working okay we'll do lumber mill stuff over there how does eiffel tower help you here eiffel tower sorry i keep forgetting that not everyone understands what the wonders do um my, my bad i should be explaining the eiffel tower gives all tiles in your civilization plus two appeal it must be built on flatland adjacent to your city center uh, the reason that this is really good is because i'm going for a tourism victory and tourism victories often scale off of how much appeal your empire's tiles can manage. In particular, uh, since I'm also getting the Cristo Red and Tor, which gives you 100% tourism from seaside re resorts built in your empire, um, seaside resorts give you tourism based on the appeal. You can see here, the seaside resort has an appeal of breathtaking four, which means it's generating four gold, which means it's generating five tourism. It's four base plus 25% because I have researched uh, the computer's technology, which gives you a 25% tourism boost. Once I have the environmental our, our environmentalism tourism thing that'll be another two so if i build the eiffel tower this will be worth six gold which means it'll be worth six base tourism with a 50 percent increase that would be worth nine tourism if i also go ahead and then pick up the crystal red and tour a single a single seaside resort can be worth 18 tourism the baseline tourism that you get from a national park is 16 right now i'm getting really high tourism from these because i went for really really high appeal on these tiles and i'm doubling them so like if you look at this i'm getting 40 tourism from this but that's doubled so i should only be getting 20 tourism from this so a single seaside resort with the crystal red and tour and the eiffel tower can be worth as much as an entire national park that's how powerful they are. It's insane. 
And that's why I need to be getting seaside re resorts like ASAP now, which is why it's builder time. So hopefully that uh, was useful info. Uh, I can't get a seaside resort here. It makes me angry. Grace Hopper, uh, two randomly chosen free technologies is actually pretty damn good here. If it's sanitation and economics, I'm like mildly sad, but free techs is like pretty damn good. Economics and advanced flight. Okay, I'll take economics and advanced flight. Corporations are quite good. I didn't go for great merchants at all this game. Pumping all my money into military engineers. We got our electronics factory in Yaskilia. So this is being uh, replicated now. These uh, eight production and four culture. Well, the eight production will be when I build my power plant. That'll be replicated across all of these factories. Um, I'm also going to get an oil power plant for another three production. So this is going to be a significant boost to everything within range here, as well as electricity, which will be very useful. Spies are escaping. I'm, I'm getting really good luck with spies this game. Um, I probably shouldn't jinx it, though. This is my debater. You heal for a turn. Keep stealing artifacts. May as well get that coffee up, because now it's a monopoly, I think. Almost a full monopoly. Hang on, do I not have all the coffee improved? Ah, there's one in Preslav. Okay. And one of my coffees is flooding. Ugh, Valetta's not in this game, right? I can't just like faith purchase things. Okay, I don't know why you're angry with me, Eleanor. I've literally done nothing to you. I've access to another spy. I can do rock bands. I'm not going to be doing rock band stuff this game. Not until I have all my national parks done. And by the time I get that, he will already have uh, music censorship. So it's probably not even worth thinking about rock bands. For the sake of securing this national park, I will buy these tiles, even though I really don't want to spend the money on it. I'm doing this because this tourism tile will be worth a lot in the late game. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think we go for social media now for the 50% tourism output to civilizations that you have a trade route with. Don't think I have room for great works of writing. World games, I only have bronze, which is stupid because I'm second. I should at least get silver. It's so dumb. So dumb. We got our consulate. Let's get the chancery. I'm not dealing with any flooding here, am I? No, I'm okay. Seaside resorts galore here eventually. So we managed to pillage his spaceport and slow him down. That's perfect because he's the one I want to prevent from doing the moon landing. Until then, I may as well pillage his industrial zone too. Fukuoka. Seven turns until Cristo. The lightning bolt in the, in the notifications? The uh, trading. With the quick deals mod. Quick deals mod? Let's see, trade things uh, quickly. It basically checks all the viable trade deals that you have available. And it's like, oh, hey, you could trade people. And I'm like, oh, cool. Here you go. Here's some resources, right? I don't want to sell great works, but I do will sell Diplo favor. I want to buy great works of art. So I have my holy site at my theater square and I have my, my preserve. I could get the broadcast center here. Would that help me win the game? No. What helps me win the game is builders right now. I need to get those seaside resorts out ASAP. So there's like a seaside resort here, a seaside resort here, a seaside resort here, 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 forest. Because the second I get that Eiffel Tower, and more importantly, the second I get that Crystal Red and Tor, my, uh, my ability to generate tourism just like skyrockets very, very quickly. So a few builders here makes a huge difference. There's Quick finish that flood barrier, like actually just laying down. I have so much money now. It's so good. All right, what are we doing in Otakuville? Uh, how do I get extra tourism from you? Slowly build a neighborhood. Theater Square is faster. You could do a train at for me. Boom, National Park. Very happy with the extra National Park. We're up to 622 tourism per turn, which I think is very respectable. 158 turns until we win, but that should not take that long. It should be getting faster as our empire gets more developed. The real scary thing is, can I win before someone wins a science victory? Despite the fact that my empire is all encompassing of the new world. It's a tough, tough life out there, man. Almost no appeal here, except for in the northern half of the island. Might be worth it to buy a settler for over there. In terms of governor titles, renewable subsidizer I'm happy with. Um, I will grab Moksha and plug him into Wambert. Build a little bit of rail. I'm gonna get rid of that forest. If I win, if I can win the Olympics, uh, my, my campuses will generate tourism. It's a little bit of extra tourism. Extra tourism from stadiums is quite good. I think the other big major thing that I ever... No, I need to pick up cultural heritage, actually. I need the extra 100% tourism from Great Works of Artifact. I'm so angry that I didn't get Mary Leakey, dude. It's infuriating. Do I want an alliance with Wilhelmina again? I think a religious alliance with her actually worked out in my favor. Could you theme an archaeological museum? Probably, actually. So it should have been something I should have been looking out for. So we've got classical Hojo, classical England, classical Hojo, ancient Cleopatra, Renaissance Cleo, Renaissance Pacha, Renaissance England. Boom, double themed. Boom, done. So we doubled our output from these. That's perfect. Quite happy with that, actually. Should I, should, I don't know. I just forgot about it. Sometimes it's hard to remember everything you're supposed to do. Um, it's my defense. It's what I'm sticking to. 
every possible configuration. I didn't even know you could theme archaeological works. Well, that's why I have the uh, theming helper. Boom, you click the theming helper and it'll tell you things of the same color with different numbers is what you want. So you see here, if I swap these, I want three purples with all different numbers. And the problem with this set here is that I have three reds, but two of the numbers are the same. So this theming helper mod is super helpful. I just kind of, I, I did it off hand because I, I, I almost never theme. Right, we're still getting kills, really pushing back that, like we have just held the line against Protestantism here for so long, man. It's crazy. Portsmouth losing loyalty? Interesting. She must be in a dark age. Yeah, she's in a dark age and I'm in a golden age, so that she's just on the cusp of losing that city. All right, I think I'm going to just have to be happy with bronze here and stop wasting production on training athletes. Um, I miss out on the Diplo point. I miss out on the tourism. I still get bronze, so a little bit of tourism is fine. Better off spending my production on actual things that might help me win the game, like a water park. Water park here actually is pretty significant value for my empire. Plus two adjacency on both of these harbors, pl or plus one adjacency on, or plus two? Extra adjacency on my harbors, plus, what you call it? Oh, blah, 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 blah. don't remember. Don't remember my words. words. Words have gone. We're five turns until the biosphere. Say we could crank out a builder to improve this city. Biosphere just gives me more options for turning like some of this farmland into tourism generation stuff in the late game. Wanuku already has someone in the spaceport. Go to Venice. Let's steal money from Venice, my boy. Oh my God, this recording has gone on forever. Uh, oops. Well, I tell you what, I thought I might be able to finish this episode, but we are up to 700 tourism, right? Think about this. We're up to 700 tourism. We're, we're holding the line religiously. We are the last, like anything to do with religion, holding on the map. Wambert, like if she sent people over here to convert this island, it would be over for me. But she is greedy and she sees the city and she wants to convert it. We're on track. This is going to be a hard grinding win. Like we even have 200 tourists and we're still not a hedge of Pachacuti. We're 43 turns away from winning. I think we might be able to shave that down slightly because we are constantly optimizing. We're constantly building things. We're constantly improving. Like we're getting closer. Uh, we might fall into a dark age here is the only problem I have. Now, if I can get a national park, that's three era scores. I think, I think we might be able to squeak by with a normal age. But my God, is this an intense, difficult economic game? Because I'm playing with the limitation where I can't really like... I don't want to declare war on the Inca. That's the easy way out, right? I could I could kill this whole continent in a matter of like, you know, 100 turns, give or take, depending on how many aircraft I could get. And I could get a lot of aircraft. But I don't want to do that. So that's going to be it for me today and this stream. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.